and welcome to the Sable International UK Citizenship Podcast. My name is Tallulah and I'm here with Michelle Patel. Michelle was recently in South Africa offering free consultations in Cape Town, Joburg and up and down the garden routes. We'll hear all about that in a minute, but first I believe there's an update regarding the nationality law changes that are currently working their way through Parliament. Uh, Michelle, can you just remind us what those law changes entail? Hi, Talila. Uh, good to be back on the podcast. Um, the law changes um, in terms of the British nationality part of them basically entail making things sort of equal going retrospectively, retrospectively back, um, you know, sort of 100 years. Um, again, it's mainly to do with the earlier laws being um, gender discriminatory. So the current act that's being passed through Parliament, almost at the end now, um, is looking to address that retrospectively in, in, a, in, in a format of offering a new registration for adults who would be British, but for the gender discrimination in the earlier laws. Examples would be um, if you would have inherited citizenship, but you had a grandmother instead of a grandfather, or you were born out of wedlock um, and certain things like that, right? Here's the grandparent distinction. And when do we expect them to pass? What's the current status? Whilst I was away um, with, with you guys down in South Africa, it actually it cleared the House of Lords, which is the second House of Parliament. Now it's at the consideration stage, which is the final, final second last stage before it receives royal assent. So at this stage, it will go back to the House of Commons, the first house, to then for them to actually debate and agree the changes that have been made by the House of Lords. And hopefully they agree. Otherwise, we will have a little bit of a ping pong session, as they call it, where the both houses will keep on talking to each other until they reach a final agreement of what the bill should look like. I suspect we're looking at another two or three months worth of back and forth. That's a bit quicker than we expected. Correct. Yes. Okay, now on to your roadshow. How was the experience? Yeah. Maybe you can tell us about a few of the, ca the cases you encountered. Yeah, when I think back to... The sort of 14 days we spent back to back sort of visiting different places. You know, we started with Johannesburg, Pretoria, um, Durban, Stellenbosch, Cape Town, and so on. Um, the, it was quite, uh, quite, quite, quite something meeting what is ideally, you know, some, some 2,000 people in the 14 days we did this. And um, a... A few stick out to me because uh, although it was quite, it was quite rewarding. It was obviously quite a bit of talking, and you know, at times it was emotional. The 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 ones that stick out are usually those um, which we saw quite a bit of, which was the um, crown service ones, which which I didn't actually expect. So this is where you have a claim to a grand grandparent who's a uh, grandfather at the moment, at least. Who, who perform crime service. Um, the, the, that was one of the top runners. The other one was simply what you said earlier, which is the, the person would be British, but for the fact that it's their grandmother born in UK, not their grandfather. And that's the only reason why we think it will work, but it currently doesn't work. So that was a large majority of people we, we came across in terms of family trees. And we also came across um, what I call the triple descent, which is um, to a great grandparent. So although rare, we did see a handful of them, which again, took me by surprise whilst I was down there. Any particular stories that stick out to you? Yeah, two, I think mainly. Um, no, in fact, I, I, I take that back three. Um, there was, there was, I think, because it's so emotional. So I think they do stick out. Um, I think one was the triple descent one. Where the where where we had two young 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 lads walk in um, with their mom, and it ended up being the case. And I won't go into too much details; I don't have the time. But uh, we'll cover that separately. Um, they had, in fact, they were British already, just they didn't realise it, and actually mm. came through their maternal great grandfather. And awkwardly enough, it just ended up being the right set of circumstances. That's all it is, really. Um, wow. And they were, they were, yeah, they were quite actually quite taken aback in the sort of 10 minutes they spent with me yeah. on, on how we were able to confirm that in the moment itself. You got um, to do the famous happened... little gamble, you're British. Yes, 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the left feeling a little bit surprised and I, I think it hadn't quite set in because mm. I did hear back from them a couple of days ago going, were you sure or are you sure? And I go, mm, yes. And so, so they have signed up. So that was one of them. The second one was um, where a lady had walked in and she said, oh, but my dad's born in the UK. And it, it just took me aback because I thought that's quite simple. You, you know, you should already have a British passport. But she was adopted by this gentleman oh, rather okay. than her being, which I think in British nationality law, unfortunately, there's always been a big distinction between biological children and adoptive children. And although there are ways in which you can register adoptive children, those ways cut off or disappear when the child turns 18. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people who didn't know missed that boat. So a large part of what we are looking to do when the new bill uh, becomes an act of parliament and, and commences is to actually have a go at actually having someone like her be registered in the modern day, mm -hmm. because it does strike one as unfair there's just an age issue here um, and apparent, and you know, it was not in her control because she would have been a child at that point as well. She couldn't make her own determination whether she wanted her nationality or not at that point. And um, anyway, having explained it to her again, you know, it's just very emotional. She started tearing up. She's like, she'd been trying to do this for the best part of 25 years. Um, you know, so that, that was quite something. And I think yeah. the last one without, again, taking up too much time was where someone had been to the British consulates in Pretoria and all that as a, as a young person had been fighting their case for a long time just because they happened to have a maternal grandmother born in the UK, not a grandfather, and was always turned away. And so was her mom. And her mom actually passed away trying to help her, you know, so that was something Shame. that was undone. Yeah. yeah. Um, but actually, she has a very strong claim. And that's what I said to her. I said, maybe you've gone about this the wrong way. And actually, you do have a claim. And we can actually process it now. It's just oh, end up fall. using another grandparent. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, for whatever reason, she just, it just was in Durban. It was like four o'clock in the afternoon. And, you know, she just looked at me and she just started tearing up. And for whatever reason, I also started tearing up. Aww. And I think it's just in that moment, yeah, we had a little hug. I think in that moment, it just made it worthwhile speaking to, you know, it made our trip worthwhile, although it was quite yeah. tiring, you know, but it made our trip worthwhile um, just, just for those sort of magical moments, as, as I call them. Yeah. Well, great. Um, that's amazing. I'm sure you're exhausted <laughs> still and trying to catch up. But <laughs> <A little> um, <laughs> just just remind it to yeah. everyone listening, you don't have to wait for Michelle to visit South Africa to speak to him. You can get in touch with him and his team by filling in our free online assessment, which is at sableinternational.com forward slash British dash citizenship. Or just Google Sable International Citizenship Assessment. It'll be the first result that comes up. Yep. Yep, so um, that's all for today. We will return to our series on common routes for South Africans next with an episode specifically about Crown Service, which Michelle mentioned earlier, which is a surprisingly common route for South Africans. Thanks, for Michelle. Thank Thanks for your time. <laughs>